Well, silly me, I wound up accidentally deleting, before it was downloaded, the second part of making the Plains horse bow sinew back gull wing. And so I'm, I'm redoing it. I wound up splitting another, another stave, another raw round, which had been soaking in the creek. And there's always been this debate on water curing wood. I think it's kind of a misdirection. I believe the point in soaking your rounds, unsplit, just raw rounds, in the water for great periods of time is just to keep it green, to make it easy to work, and also to prevent bugs from getting in and destroying it, although I always peel the bark off whenever I cut rounds. I'm just putting them in cold storage, so to speak. It also like overfills the wood with water, which makes it even easier to work. And if you consider the drying curve of wood from green to the final moisture level, because these need to be about 9% moisture content to be considered finished curing, um, that that water curve happens really steeply in the beginning. If you have high water content, the majority of that water is going to disappear in the first few days, if not sooner, and so it doesn't make any real difference in the greater scheme of things to like over soak these things. I just like soaking them in water just to preserve and keep them green. So it happens that the Simple D bow, project bow number one in my book, a bow maker's notebook available on, on Amazon, and this gull wing, which you'll see it, you'll see it. I just happen to have gotten to this point so it's drying shaped but I have to redo the video. That just happens. Anyway, this, project bow number three and project bow number one are very similar up to a certain point. Yes, I will lash this to a board like this, but just to straighten it so it's straight through the tip, through the handle, um, through the other tip. I'm not doing it to shape it into the gull wing. I'm not gonna send you back this thing. But up to a certain point, they are the same exact animals. What I do is I simply baton using my knife and I don't hammer it through with a steel. You know, I just simply took this and did it center and whacked it through and received two splats. So I've got the thicker one here, which I can make a bow out of. And I achieved this thinner one that was almost ready to go. Now, when you look at this, you can see, if the lighting is okay, you can see a dark strip of heartwood running through here. This end was just pure white. It was thicker than the other one. So my first reaction to that was, because it's thick enough through the handle, greater than three quarters of an inch, all I'm going to do is take that split and have a continuous thickness throughout using that color as a guide. You will see different colors in your wood, and that is your map to success. So just take this and just whiz this thing through. Until you see equal color. I'm not going to take the time. I hope I like expressed my opinion on what I'm doing. I'm gonna like do a little bit of house cleaning because I'm gonna continue to work. But what I should be doing is continuing this dark strip down the center, and then it's white. Keep, keep splitting this off here until it's an equal amount of brown throughout, and that will give me roughly the same thickness. To arrive at this face shape, now this is of some question to you if you haven't been making a lot of bows. What I shall do is attempt, with every fiber of my being, to have a handle thickness of about a half an inch. This is not uh, one and a half inches. This is not going to be a little less than one and a half inches. This is not going to be sinew back, so it needs to be a little wider than this. Tapering down to, let's see, that's seven eighths of an inch. It could be a little less on the tips, but this is not a big bow carrying a lot of inertia through the limbs. It's a short bow, so I'm not so worried about getting needle tips to save weight. Shorter bows don't lose anything 
um, of major consequence if the tips aren't feather light. I can do it several ways. Being very careful in sighting down here, draw your tick mark seven eighths of an inch and like just shy of one and a half inches because you don't want to go beyond one and a half inches because of paradox. And then just following the fibers and tapering it by eye, noting any spots where it suddenly gets thinner and th or narrower and then thicker and then resolving that or else making a template. This is quarter inch plywood. I've got a bunch of these things and then I can just figure out where I want it down here. I've got some leeway. It gets thicker as it goes down here so I can adjust it this way and just mark it following the waves. Mark this far and then shift it so it's centered. Mark this way and then that final one. You're going to find that it's hard to like use a sharpie on wet wood. So forget the sharpie, forget the pencils, it just doesn't work. Get an awl or something sharp. I actually use the end of my rat tail file and just using your template. This is not high technology. It's just a nice tapered thing. Just scratch it in there and you will see lines that were imparted upon the wood from a sharp object. And then just work down any way you want. I do a variety of things when I'm working this face shape down. Because it's thin to a point and it's green, works really fast. In the beginning stages, I shall use, you could use a one-handled knife or a two-handled knife or a draw knife, just carefully working close to your lines. And I am a believer in rasps. Rasping down to the lines works really fast in green wood in conjunction with sighting down. Now for thinness, car, I'm going to have to continue this on the next one. Or not. Nope, they're backing up. Okay. Let's say that I have, I'll, I'll work a little bit on this. I'll work a little bit on this so you can see. I don't, do not have it marked, but for the sake of argument, let's say I do. I've got my lines scribed, and I was careful to adjust my tip orientation on this to better line things up from tip, handle, center to tip. And let's say it's offset this way a little bit. Then I'm going to start my template um, accordingly. And then working down to my lines like this. Green wood works easy. You could use a stone tool for this. Another car, but I don't know. They might back up because they see the five dollar charge sign. Yep. Then following it up with this, which works incredibly fast on green wood. It took me all of about five minutes of that to work it down to the shape. Thickness thickness. The magic number on a 60 inch below bow for floor tilling is half inch thick. It's going to be even thicker because of that crown. I've done it a couple ways. In the past, before I had a scribing tool to just follow along here to make it super easy, I would just take strips of cardstock. This is my half inch one. And I would mark being very careful, putting it against the back, and then scribing or drawing a line following that, following all the curves and undulations the whole way down. You could do it beyond that. You could make a narrower one for the tips. Let's do like one third, one third, one third. One third of the, the limb is a little thicker, then it goes to half an inch, and then another third here that's a little narrower. You've got then on each half limb three lines, a thicker one, half inch one, then slightly thinner, and then work it down to those using your growth ring pattern to have even steps from one to another because you don't want to have thick, then thinner, then thinner. You want to grade it down. You want to taper it. And if you have it marked to a half an inch and then slightly less and slightly more here, when it gets to the point of doing this, which I will show you in the next video, 
then you'll have a floor tillered bowl. If you have a decent bend through there, then you can go and and then tie it down and let it sit for a while. Another way I do, instead of using a tillering tree, is just doing this, or else you can use a tillering stick to get an even bend, being very, very careful that you're not overstressing the bowl, because this is green, it does not want to bend like a, a cured wood bowl. So out of this video, this modest video, I hope you take away that soaking these is not curing the wood, it's just putting it in cold storage and allowing them to stay green longer and eliminate the cracks. Suppose you didn't want to soak them, you wanted them to start drying. If you have a full round, do take the bark off. You don't want bugs to get in. The second thing is taking a circular saw or a chainsaw, run a length, run a cut lengthwise down to the center. So when this dries, it's going to open up and you're not going to get a bunch of random cracks. It's going to ruin potential bow stays. Control the movement of the wood as it dries. So a cut down the center, or a cut down the length to the center will fix that. It'll also help it to dry a little longer. With woods like elm and sometimes the maples and maybe sometimes other woods, when you are to go and you're happy, you cut a bunch of big rounds, logs, and you split them, and you let them dry, when you come back, they're all twisted and contorted. Aha! Elm especially. The best way to handle that is cutting a line down to the center and letting it dry for a period of time before you split it into stays. Which will be fun because elm has interlocking grain and it does not want to split. But you will retain the maximum yield in that log by doing that and letting it go through a, a primary drying process with just a line down here. That'll stabilize, it'll keep it from twisting, it'll keep all those states from being ruined. I've seen it. Ambitiously go splitting around into a bunch of staves, they dry, they're all ruined. I would rather spend a little bit more time waiting for those to dry stably, supported by its, its own self, and then have a full yield. The other thing I want to impart on you is marking, marking the lines. On green wood, it is not any special thing. You do not need to have special skills, really, to remove wood. It's soft, especially soft if you let them soak. So the, the tricky part, which isn't really tricky, is just marking. Make a template. Make a template out of cardstock. Go from a little less than an inch and a half wide here to seven eighths inch inch here you can keep it parallel if you want you can have a constant taper whatever and then just mark your bows before you start reducing the width the third thing is marking the sides either just cut some things out of cardstock mark them along the sides so you can work down or else use something like this to mark the sides and work down to them and if you do that evenly the face is the same width from length to length on this limb as it is here, you have equal amount of thinness taper here as you do here, You're, you are going to have a floor tillered bow. So it's the old game, work smarter not harder. Now my apologies for erasing that video in which I was working this one to the point of being able to tie it down. And yes, I did steam the handle because it was so stiff, but you can do anything you want. I didn't want to damage this wood. I did steam this before I tied it down just to give it a little bit more like flexibility. Um, but this ball, the D ball, and this ball, the Gullwing horse ball, you know, up to this point are really the same thing. The only thing is I'm not going to shape this into a Gullwing, and I'm not going to send you back it. Just don't tell anybody I'm going to send you back this one because send you backing is so easy and it's going to make it a superior bow. When I lashed this one down, not going for a gull wing, I'm just going to like jimmy the tip um, side to side so it dries straight. Okay, closing down. Been lucky so far. Had a couple people just turn around. 
probably won't be lucky in the future. I am going to continue. I'm going to mark this side, work it down to this width so it'll be symmetrical. I'm not going to try to scrape this, the, um, not sapwood, but the inner bark off of this until it's dried because when it's wet like this, you can't tell where the inner bark stops and the sapwood begins, and I do not want to scar this back up. It's thin enough, so it's not going to affect too much, you know, this, but I'm going to final tiller it anyway, so whatever. It's all good. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And I apologize for my, my video production quality, but when it comes down to it, you know, I just am making more bows than sitting in front of the computer trying to figure stuff out. Have a great one. Have a good one. Beautiful day. Get out and make your bows.